Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who Big Finish audio drama review. In today's review, rather unusually, we're going to be saying goodbye to a Doctor Who spin-off series, which I have been reviewing on the Hus Productions since way back in 2019. It is of course The Robots, starring Nicola Walker as Levchenka, alongside her sister Tulachenka, as portrayed by Claire Rushbrook. This box set, along with the other releases within this series, are available to order from the Big Finish website now in both physical CD and digital download formats, although do note, the first few volumes within this series are in fact slowly going out of print, they've been added to the last chance on CD section on Big Finish website, so I do definitely recommend purchasing them soon in order to avoid disappointment, and as I've mentioned throughout all of the reviews within this series, I have absolutely loved reviewing this series over the past few years, and if it's something that does interest you, I definitely recommend taking advantage of those bundles on the Big Finish website. It saves you a little bit of money, but also allows you to experience the series as an entire package, rather than the individual volumes. As I've mentioned within each and every review, this is one big 18-part series, so all of the episodes are in a sense a chapter within a much grander plot, so it's something of which that you certainly can't cherry-pick the box sets that you listen to. Definitely recommend starting with Volume 1 and working your way through the series to get to this rather exciting series finale. Something of which that I do like to remind viewers pretty much in each and every review within this series is that when the robots was initially announced, I did in fact roll my eyes a little bit and think, why? Why are they doing this? And it was around the time when everybody used to joke that Big Finish could make four plus box sets in absolutely anything with any characters, and I was wrong. I will hold my hands up and say I was absolutely wrong, because the robots as a series is one that is incredibly intriguing, a brilliant commentary on humanity and technology, and the uses of artificial intelligence, and it is one of the most consistent Doctor Who spin-offs that Big Finish have produced in recent years. I think that this is a series that if you are looking for something different that doesn't necessarily have the Doctor present, this is definitely a series for you, because you follow, of course, one of the Doctor's companions, being Livchenka, she's been left behind on her home planet of Kaldor, and this whole series is basically a commentary on the various applications of technology within Kaldonian society. You don't really need to go in with too much context, if you love the Robots of Death, then this is definitely a series for you, but also if you like technology as well. So Force of Nature, written by Helen Goldwyn, opens this final set of the robots. It picks up on the events of the previous series, whilst also projecting the series forward into its final chapter. I was really happy to hear that this box set opens with a lovely dedication to Chris Boucher, the architect of Kaldor, who sadly passed away recently, and of course was the writer of the fourth Doctor serial, The Robots of Death. I think it says a lot that this entire series has been developed from 170's Fourth Doctor serial, and has continued to be new and exciting with each and every release, commentating on that relationship between humans and artificial intelligence. It only makes sense that this series starts off with further commentary on the concept of sentience. Liv and Tula become part of a program crafted to help members of the company come out of the other side of difficult situations. Tula became rather closely bonded with the AI within the previous volume, avoiding a few spoilers there, and this story deals with that return to humanity and free thinking. Whilst Liv also joins her on that path to recovery, helping her sister where she can, which which naturally causes a little bit of tension. Joshua Riley and Beth Chalmers embody the rehabilitation program with the characters of Hiss and Laurel. They continue to show how Kaldor is a very troubled, manipulated, and frankly scared society, which also can't help itself to the continuing development of technology. Likewise, Yinka runs the program, helping people find themselves once more. But you can't help but feel that everyone has their own motives. As always, it's a series of backstabbing and corruption. It goes without saying that this episode does also feature some minor cameos from reoccurring characters, the likes of Sorkov, as portrayed by John Shaw, and Greg Kieran, as portrayed by Sarah Lambie. Again, this also highlights the fact that this is one big continuation of a series with linked events between all of the volumes, rather than standalone stories making chronological listening essential for maximum reward. 
the portrayal of artificial intelligence through the various interpretations of Vok have been incredible within this series to date, varying in purpose and application. This time we have the sinister SV-113 who helps humans within the sessions to talk to one another in a more effective way. That's right, Vok robots basically telling people how to be more human and functional. The robot does also get to know the humans very well, including their personal information. Naturally, this theme has been done multiple times throughout science fiction, turning the humans against one another through manipulation of facts and statistics, but I think here it's done really well, showing how far the series has came within technological advances. You definitely get that sense of progression. Here we have the Vok robots perhaps free thinking and doing their own thing. From this episode moving forward and the aftermaths of the previous volume's events, it's intriguing seeing a wedge starting to form between the Chanka sisters, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this is resolved. Ultimately, this volume and its main focus is the Chanka sisters, and seeing how far their relationship has grown or not grown within the previous volumes. I've noticed that my big finish listening habits over the past few years have certainly changed since the early days of my big finish listening, because normally I would go into a story that has the doctor present as the guiding hand that guides the listener throughout the adventure. As I've listened to more stories, I've realised that I far more appreciate the episodes that focus on the companions, the likes of this series, where you have a Doctor Who companion doing stuff in the absence of the doctor. And I think that is because humans are generally a bit more realistic, they're more flawed as characters, so subsequently you don't quite know where this series is going to go. There is an element of unpredictability there, especially when you consider the likes of Torchwood, which does have very flawed characters, which in itself makes for very interesting storytelling. The second episode of the set is a two-hander story entitled Face to Face, as written by John Dorney. This story pits our two main protagonists, being the Chanka sisters, against each other, as they both are locked in their apartment. Except there is two lives and two Tulas, and someone has got very good at making very lifelike duplicates. Again, this story is a commentary on the development of the company's technology and how far it's came over the past few months, from the Vok experimentation to fully-fledged replicas of Kaldor citizens. It's very unnerving, but also showcases superbly how the line between humanity and technology has started to blur, especially within the later volumes. As we are so close now to the series finale, I think it will be easy to assume that this box set is going to be all out action packed, and to an extent part of me did want to see that, seeing all out war between Kaldor City and the company's uncanny creations. Especially now that the company has overstepped the line with the mass implementation of the enhancement chip as seen within the previous volume. But in reality, despite the tech, despite the company and Kaldor as a whole, this story has always been about the Chanka sisters, and them once more formulating a bond after Liv's long time away in the TARDIS. I think both Nicola Walker and Claire Rushbrook offer brilliant performances throughout. The bond between them is strong, but also troubled in its past. The story really puts them to the test, and despite it being a one-hour two-hander, I think it's written in a way that flows very naturally. Especially given the consideration that these are two characters locked in a room, they're trying to determine who is the fake version of Liv and Tula, and subsequently each and every line plays a very important role in projecting the story forward. It's not like you can cut away to something more exciting. And personally, for me as a listener, I think it certainly flows very well, and actually went considerably quickly, given the very limited cast. I think the episode overall certainly kept me on my toes, trying to figure out what's going on before the main leads do. Is it a test? Who has set them up and why? Is it a game of risk and trusting themselves in making the right decisions? It's fair to say that the Chanka sisters have been through a lot. With Tula's company links, she doesn't always see eye to eye with Liv, and the relationship has definitely been put to the test. 
Again, I think that this is what the series does so well, that sense of natural progression between the episodes, which gives the whole story a sense of direction. We have had a number of rather personal episodes already within the series, so I imagine that if you've got to this point in Volume 6, you will probably enjoy this one. Ultimately, I think that is one of the main benefits of having a Doctor Who spin-off series within the box set format, because it allows you to do episodes the likes of this one, which is a two-hander, that would otherwise be rather difficult for a new listener to get on board with. It allows you to have a story that if you are hooked by the characters and their dynamic and their relationship, it allows you to explore their mindsets and emotions a little bit more. So subsequently, I think this is one of those episodes that again really sells the relationship between the main characters, whilst also pushing us towards that final story. As I mentioned earlier, I was expecting something a little bit all-out war, but in reality, that just really wouldn't work within the audio drama format. It would just be loads of sound effects and explosions. And perhaps, come to think of it, that is where TV series finales often fall down, because you don't have that gritty dialogue and interaction between these characters that ramp up the tension. As we enter the final one hour of audio drama as a part of the Robots spin-off series, I do wonder if one episode will be enough to wrap everything up. This series has done a lot, we've met a lot of people along the way, and especially given that this episode has left those side characters, the likes of Sarkov and Grag Karen absent, will the final provide a worthy end? It does feel very, very odd experiencing a Doctor Who Big Finish spin-off, which has the chance to end with a planned final story, rather than ending in an unexpected or out-of-control life circumstances way, or even being left open to a return. Excuse the terrible joke, but I think this is the first ever time as a listener that I've actually been able to experience Big Finish, quite literally doing a Big Finish. And so, the end is nigh, the final hour, as written by Matt Fitton. This episode has two jobs, to conclude the spin-off series as a whole, and to put Liv back on board the TARDIS at the end of the story, ready to pick up the events of Ravenous with the Eighth Doctor and Helen. I suppose rather unusually, we've actually had the conclusion of the robots as a spin-off series now, able to publicly listen to way back since 2018, so it's very interesting to finally get the story that somewhat provides the context which leads up to the events at the very end of that episode released many, many years ago. I'm happy to see Paul McGann back as the Eighth Doctor in a five minute or so appearance towards the end of the episode, reflecting on family with Liv. However, he isn't around for for the whole story, and that is definitely the way to do it. This is the Chenka sisters' final hour together, and it's their job to solve the events of the series. Again, relating to what I was saying earlier about having these series that focus on people other than the Doctor, I think it would have been incredibly frustrating if the Doctor just wandered in and fixed everything. This is the story that Liv and her sister have gone on out of the Doctor's presence, and I think that the episode overall provides a very satisfactory conclusion. I love the way that this story is designed, it does very much feel like the final hour on Kaldor. In a way, the story almost feels like it's being played out live. We constantly follow the main protagonists, with Tula coming face to face with Grag Karen in the company HQ, and Liv listening in alongside Sorkov, as tensions start to heighten within Kaldor society. Due to the story style, there is certainly that atmosphere, a momentum that increases throughout, which allows the listeners to finally experience the repercussions and revelations this series has so far brilliantly built up over the release's duration. A little bit of a mild spoiler, but I really appreciate how the story also provides reference to Liz Toos, Paul, and Skellen, characters who have appeared throughout this series so far, and have all contributed to its excellence. It really does feel like a final hurrah. And due to the fact that they aren't present on the cast list, of course, for this box set, I think it will be no spoiler to say that the likes of Toos and Skellen are not present within this story, but also, sadly, David Collings can't make a return due to him passing away a number of years ago. But it's lovely to hear that the characters are still living on within these adventures. 
It's one final showdown which presents just how far the robots have came, expanding upon what is essentially the events within one story within Ravenous that ultimately laid the foundations for this entire series to even happen, and of course the excellence of Chris Boucher within the Robots of Death for bringing Kaldor society to life. The Vok robots themselves also get some great standout moments, and I can't help but root for them. They have been superbly presented on audio in so many different forms, and I've loved experiencing their journey on audio. Sarah Lambie also puts in one final cold performance as Grog Curran. Again, she's been a delight to experience since Volume 4. Very strong-minded and set in her own view of Kaldor, which makes her perfectly frustrating to listen to throughout. I think Sarah's performance also really accelerates the strengths within Nicola Walker and Claire Rushbrook's portrayals. She truly tests them and their vulnerabilities. This volume has been a very personal one for the Chanka sisters, offering closure to past events whilst also opening up to the next chapter. We've been able to hear both characters grow despite their very different views, and I like how the final hour uses that. As a listener, I feel satisfied that both characters have been given a good send-off, whilst also not showing that everything is perfect, as in life, there is always loose ends. It's something that I've mentioned throughout many of these reviews, and I will reiterate it in this one as well. I have really became to love Levchenka as a result of this series, and it's really influenced my enjoyment of other series, the likes of the Eighth Doctor Adventures in Ravenous and Stranded, because we've got to see her doing something very different within the Doctor's absence. As an ending, I'm satisfied. I don't feel like it's a cop-out, and I don't feel like it's an anti-climax. Ultimately, this series could go on forever. Whole series can easily be built off the concept of humans versus technology, but they needed a way to conclude it. And very much like how is reflective within the relationship of the Chanka sisters, everything goes on, life continues, and as much as this episode does conclude the events that we've seen throughout this series, it also acknowledges the fact Kaldor will live on. It has things to do, it has things to decide, and ultimately it is that beginning of a brand new chapter. So regardless of what happens next, this is the end for this version of the robots as a series, and a very satisfactory one at that, and I must admit, I had a tear in my eye at the end, because it, it's been a series I really have enjoyed. It's also very, very satisfying to see the way that this episode is kind of blended into the events of that episode within Ravenous, and it's just so satisfying seeing that loose end in particular being tied together, ultimately bringing this series full circle, and concluding that era within Liv's life. Before we conclude this review, I would also like to give a big shout out to the regulars within the production team, including John Dorney, Ken Bentley, David Richardson, and Ryan Ampling, providing consistently beautiful cover arts, and Joe Kramer, providing an excellent music score, creating such a uniform, consistent, and well-planned series from many different aspects of the production. I started listening to the robots in the winter of my second year at university. Then lockdown happened, and now it concludes near the end of my second master's. It feels very fitting to say goodbye to this grand 18-part story, but also thank you for the many hours of enjoyment that it's given me as a listener over the past few years. So this is a very unusual feeling, and one of which that doesn't happen often, as I've concluded a big finish spin-off. A spin-off has actually ended, somehow, and it feels very odd. What do I do now? I've got no idea. Overall, however, for the robots, I definitely recommend checking out this series, in particular if you are a fan of artificial intelligence, or the ways in which humanity utilises technology as a part of our day-to-day -day lives. It's a series that I found incredibly intriguing to listen to, but also one that I imagine will be absolutely excellent to binge listen. So if this is something that you think you would be interested in, I definitely recommend taking advantage of the bundles on the Big Finish website and purchasing the series, and simply listening away and enjoying being transported on this adventure to a completely different planet. It's definitely been, in fact, one of the series that I've really enjoyed returning to the most over the past few years, and I think that overall it was a very rewarding listening experience. So yeah, thanks, Kaldor. Until next time.